Hey guys, welcome back again. Today we're shooting the 1916 Spanish Mauser, this one in 762 by 51. Of course, it's also designed initially to shoot the 7x57 round. Uh, j and Sales sent me this gun. They've got plenty of the 7x57. They've got some of the 7.62x51 as well. Um, what I hear is it's perfectly fine to shoot 308 through it as well. So we're going to be doing that today. But what we're going to start off with is some of this stuff. Some ammo j and sent me to go along with the gun. As you can see, the gun looks pretty eh, kind of beat up. I'll tell you one thing right now. Look at this. That front sling attachment. In fact, I was having a... Oh, there it goes. See? And that'll just flop right off right there. It's a pretty dinged up gun, right? Looks kind of thrashed. Reminds me of the SKS they sent me, which shoots amazingly well. So if this Spanish Mauser shoots as well as that SKS did, pretty sweet gun. Well, let's put some rounds through it and find out. Again, we're going to shoot some 7.62x51 of various brands to put it on paper, put it on steel and all that stuff. But to start off, let's just load it up with five and see if it even works. Looks like we're hitting off to the right. And there goes my target. <laughs> I guess it wasn't set up as well as I thought it was. But we nailed it in the second shot. Hello. Let's try that again. Not sure what I did wrong there. Bolt home. There it is. All right, a couple more rounds through it. Not bad at all. Again, we knocked that steel target down the first time we hit it, so we're gonna have to reset that and uh, see if we can hit it repeatedly, but um, hit it on the second shot without too much difficulty. Let's shoot it a little more, see how we do. All right, our steel is repositioned, so let's lob a few more rounds at it. That looked like that was high, maybe. Possibly high on that one as well. Hold a little low. Connect it easily. Holding a little low and left again. Looks like our ring is sliding all the way forward. I, pr I figured that would probably happen. Not a huge deal for being out of the range like this, but obviously something I want to take care of for using this gun in the long run. Very rudimentary, that front post there. It is what it is. And then of course, a little notch here at the rear. We do have gradations here on that rear sight. So I can slide this up, it looks like, out to, I suppose that's about 2,000 yards. If you take it all the way up to the end there. So 300 seems to be what we're zeroed at. But uh, we're gonna get this thing on paper, see where it's printing, and then maybe try steel again after a little while. All right, at 25 yards, we're gonna start off shooting some of that surplus ammo j and sent. Once again, this is 762 by 51 stuff. Uh, after that, we'll move up to some other brands of 762 by 51 and maybe try um, some match 308. We'll see how it goes. Some of these rounds get a little, I don't know, uncooperative as far as coming out of the chamber. Last round. This is made by MEN. Pick this up on, I think it's cheaper than dirt. Let's see how this stuff does. Last 
found. We'll do some of this PMC X Tac. Up, we got American Eagle. Should be the last round here. Because I have it, I thought I'd also shoot a little match grade 308. What we have here is 175 grain uh, Sierra Match King Boat Tail Hollow Points Gold Medal Match from Federal Premium. All right, 25 yards, not a whole lot of variation. Right there, we've got the surplus that J&G sent me. Then right over here, we've got that MEN stuff in 762. Down here, we've got the PMC. Over yonder, this here is Federal, 762. And that would be our match grade uh, stuff right there. What we can definitely see is a very, very common pattern. Everything is hitting slightly high and way over to the right. So in trying to hit steel here in a moment, I'm gonna to try to compensate for that and we'll see if we can uh, make two and get some consistent hits. If I hold nice and far off to the left, it should connect pretty consistently. Let's see if we do it. Four out of five. feeding issues every now and then. Last one. Make it count. Yeah! Doing all right. Uh, consistently, fairly consistently, getting on target there at 100 yards with this pretty old Mauser. Spanish Mauser, once again, j and Sales has them. They've got this one right here for about 200 bucks. The 7x57, about 180 if I remember right. 762x51, eating up lots of different brands of it with no problem. Consistently accurate um, out to 100 yards as long as I'm holding in the right place with it. So for the money, under 200 bucks for a 308 or a 7x57, whichever caliber you prefer, that's pretty cool. Let me share just a couple more details about the gun before I wrap it up. I showed you the sights and how those work. Let's talk about the bolts a little bit. You saw it sticking a little bit depending on the brand of ammo, certain, or I guess just certain rounds, didn't want to come out. Just had a hard time pulling them out. Made it work, wasn't that big of a deal. Maybe a little extra lubrication would probably solve that. 
Um, talking about the bolt and the magazine a little bit, five rounds as you saw, and we've got that little magazine base plate right there that, not base plate, but uh, what do you call that? Well, you've got to press that down a little bit in order to get that bolt home because you cannot, you know, once you got that, lost, that last round out of there, that basically keeps the bolt from going forward again which is a useful feature actually because now you know that you're completely empty you try to push that home without checking to see if you got anything left in the magazine uh, with your fingers see that it won't go you know you're out of ammo time to reload uh, i think that there are some stripper clips out there that will allow you to sort of do that reloading i don't have any handy can't really show those obviously but we press that down helps you to get the bolt home a little bit of a spring retention right from this point forward where you got to overcome that in order to get it all the way locked in. And that, as you can see, is the bolt ready to go. We are unlocked right now, so I'll press that trigger. You can see how that goes forward. There we are. Now, another point about it, as far as the safety is concerned. So this right here is the safety. It's kind of a quirky one uh, from not simply an operational standpoint, but also in regards to well, just some quirks. So I'll turn this back over this way, and that's actually kind of hard to do. Place it over this way, and that actually locks the bolt from opening. Send it to the middle. Now you can operate the bolt, but you cannot fire. Okay, then you send it down this way, and now you can both operate the bolt and fire. All right, so that's how that works. I did have to take this safety off. It's not very hard to do. There's a couple of videos out there that show you how it works. I did need to take the safety off when I first got the gun because placing it into safe, can't do it when the bolt isn't uh, cocked, placing it into safe does take a little, bit of a, you know, a little bit of work. And in fact, when I first got it, I couldn't really do it at all. I mean, I tried everything I could think of, pushing it and holding onto it in different ways to get that to the middle point right there, couldn't do it. I actually took it off and had to grind off a tiny bit of metal in order to create more of a ramp so that it could actually push up like that. It works perfectly now, and if I hadn't done that grinding, I probably would have been able to make it work with a lot of breaking in, a lot of just forcing it, a lot of kind of pushing it forward and sliding it up. And I do notice that when I push it forward, at the same time that I turn it, it is easier. If I just try to turn it, it's quite a bit harder. So that's something worth noting. Talking about the trigger a little bit, it's not particularly heavy. I've actually got my gauge here, so we're gonna go ahead and measure that real quick. See what that comes in at. And five pounds, not bad at all. Totally fine for an old war relic like this. What would you potentially use this gun for? Well, it's a 308 or a seven by 57. Definitely an adequate caliber for hunting and uh, for, you know, security in general. Is it a little clunky, a little dated? Yeah, you could say that, but if you're on a budget and you just want a good solid 308 that's predictable and how it hits and how it behaves, this could be all you need. Honestly, I think that this could be set up really well as a scout rifle. I don't know what the exact poundage is on it. I will put that in annotation if I can get it, but it feels pretty nice and light, relatively speaking. You've got a sling point right here in the front. You've got a sling point right there in the back. So that's all set to go. If you could mount a scope somehow to this base right here, and I'm sure there's some aftermarket stuff for that, you could get a nice forward mounted pistol scope or some other type of scout scope on this and turn it into a scout rifle. I think it'd be a very good option, a very good budget scout rifle option. And what am I gonna do with this gun in the future? I can't say for sure right now, but it has definitely got a lot of potential. JNG Sales, once again, has them at the time that I'm shooting this video in November 2016. And uh, you ought to stop by there and check them out. I'm Lee Boy Scout. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you all later. So you can see a gigantic trigger guard in there. Massive for those two triggers. Uh, to be able to operate both of those comfortably, you got to have a pretty big trigger guard. The woodwork on it looks awesome. Look at that checkering right there. 